One of the things I felt like we did wrong with Clyde right off the bat was introducing his new diet a day late. I wish we would have introduced our seed mix actually on the drive instead of our first day at home. It's pretty normal for me to offer the new diet the first day home, but then again, I'm not used to having such a long period of time with the bird before getting home, like that 12 hour drive that we had with Clyde. So I think that it would have set us up to be more successful for the diet conversion portion of his journey if I'd introduced that earlier. Now, saying that, maybe it would have made no difference at all, but it is something in hindsight that I wish I would have prepared for. However, I didn't actually know I was going to be leaving Ronnie's with a cockatiel, so there was not really a way for me to be prepared. We realized pretty quickly that Clyde would lunge at bare skin, but as soon as the skin was covered, he was a lot more cooperative. So right away, we started using our sleeve to transport him around because we needed to be able to do the basics of getting him from point A to point B, and mostly that was into the backpack to sleep, out of the backpack to hang out with us, and onto a T-stand scale. So those were kind of the necessity behaviors that we needed. So since he was most cooperative when he didn't see skin, that's just what we immediately adapted to doing. I know there's a lot of people that frown upon this, especially other trainers who say that when you bring a new animal in, you should just give it time to get used to its surroundings and adapt. I feel completely differently. I think that you should allow the environment to be set up in a way that hopefully encourages immediate interaction. Um, I found that letting an animal settle in and get used to its surroundings is usually done with that animal in a cage or an enclosure of some sort. And what happens is because the environment is brand new and therefore fairly intimidating or a little bit chaotic sometimes, the animal learns that its safe space is its cage or enclosure and that everything else remains even scarier because now it's watching it all from the safety of its cage. Usually it leads to a harder time getting the animal to come out and interact with you and it's just more of an uphill battle. I find that if you allow the animal to be out in that environment with you getting accustomed to your new environment or the animal's new environment with you as kind of the comfort zone and the only thing that's really familiar in that environment that it leads it lends itself to a lot more opportunities for positive interactions versus leaving a bird to get used to a surroundings that it may just be scared of and it's just learning to cope all on its own. I would much prefer to allow myself to be there to help the bird through something. So for example, something that happened really early on was that Clyde could fly and we didn't think he could because not only are his wings clipped but his tail is clipped also so his balance is terrible and he's just a clumsy little cockatiel and he flew across the room. Now, of course, this ended up in a crash. Um, however, it made it so that he was really looking to us to get him out of the situation he had just gotten himself into. So kind of a check mark, we got to add that positive interaction on our side, whereas if he was settling in on a cage, that opportunity would have never um, came up. All right, that completes Claude's first day here. Obviously wasn't the most ideal first day, but tomorrow will be better. I am going to take some more ibuprofen and hope that my headache actually goes away and it doesn't take until my chiropractic appointment to go away. Because that would be a couple days. I hear Clyde this morning. Do you want to bring him out? See how he's doing? We'll weigh him. Good morning, Clyde. You look really cute. Let's, whoa, let's offer him some um, water and breakfast and see what he wants to do. So this is my homemade cockatiel seed mix. You can see it doesn't have any dyed stuff, no colors, anything like that. Um, and this is what I'm gonna try to get Clyde to eat instead of the store-bought seed mix that he came on, so. See if he wants to eat this morning. No, he does not want to. No? Will you take a little bit of millet? 
Yeah, you will. Okay. Different. It gives us a little something to work on. Okay. Will you touch the stick? Good job. Did you get one? You're gonna be in your room? Oh, okay. It's okay. Did I come in a little too fast? Good job. Oh, it's okay. All right, so it might be just moving a little too fast for him on those last ones. Most birds, when you present the stick, are gonna be naturally curious, and since birds explore with their beaks, it's pretty natural for them to just reach out and touch it if they're approached correctly with it. You understand? When you touch this, it means millet? Good job. Again, it is a touch, it's not a bite. So you wanna make sure that they're nice and gentle. You can tell he's being really gentle. Good job. Um, however, if the only way your bird will touch the stick is through a more aggressive bite, then work with what you got and try to hold the stick really far away so that it's more of like a reach instead of a bite. Are you all done? You don't look like you care about any more millet. Okay, well, he ended that session, which isn't great, but I can literally see him gaining grams as we work and he takes little bites of millet, so it's all right. That was a good win for today and I really think he wants to be by the window, so I'm gonna see if he will come up for me. I doubt he will step up right now. Will you come? No? Oh. Okay, what if I cover my hand? Will you come? Thought about it, thinking about it. Yeah, so he definitely has some sort of issue with hands or just seeing the skin. There you go. He really likes being in the window and depending on how nice it is today, maybe I'll actually get him out on that screened in porch. It's not crazy for a bird to be like, I don't trust skin, I don't trust hands. Just usually means they've been mishandled. Um, and not use permission-based training. So right now we're just kind of having to go with it because that's that's where we're at. But I hope that um, <laughs> just got a lot to say in that window. I hope that um, as he gets more comfortable, he'll be more receptive to training, and my sessions can go more than just four or five reps. Um, so in the meantime, I'm just going to make sure that I handle him without my skin showing for now because that's where his comfort level is. And we'll just slowly work on training. Um, I wanna start with the targeting. But my plan is, especially with diet conversion, just to offer it a zillion times throughout the day and just see if he's receptive. So, um, and if he's not receptive to the seed mix that I have, then I'm going to be offering training with the millet and just kinda of see where I can go from here. <laughs> so much to say. So Capri <laughs> just picked these up, which totally scared Clyde, who was on this tree, and he flew all the way over to our microwave. I'm gonna get it. So as clipped as he is, he can still totally fly. Is he trying to bite you? Yeah. Like, I don't need you. Yay! <laughs> That's it? Do it. There we go. <laughs> Yay! Do it. He's good. Okay, so put him where he can see the seed I put in there for him. I can put it in the lower one, mm -hmm. so you can reach. Oh, are you serious? You're just gonna bypass <laughs> it? That's so rude. Uh, Clyde, look. Look what you bypassed. Don't you regret your decision? No. Nope, I feel great. Are you sure? Are you sure? Oh my gosh, fine. Let's put it in there if you change your mind.